our next guest, who's going to be joining us on Wednesdays for the next little while, Mike Littlewood. And I, we call Tuesday jamming with Juddy because we have Jeff <laughs> Judkins on. Yeah. So should we call like Wednesdays, like lounging, Wednesdays? Lounging with Littlewood or, or something? Big, that's, big Mike that's Wednesdays. That's probably the tone of it, lounging. <laughs> yeah, probably more like it. <laughs> Coach, we'll let's, it let's ask you the Twitter question. What is the biggest rivalry in all of BYU sports with no BYU-Utah football until September of 2016? Well, you would you would have to say basketball just because the interest around around hoops. Um, I would like to say baseball, and it's a it's a great rivalry. But uh, we played Utah last night. Unfortunately, lost nine uh, three in a shortened game. Yeah, if we would have gotten nine innings, you'd yeah. have won. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were we were begging for those three innings. Uh, <laughs> the way we were playing, we probably would have lost thirty to three instead of nine to three. Uh, we we kind of stunk it up at the end. But you know, there was thirteen hundred people there when when. Uh, when BYU basketball plays, it's just there, there's a huge interest in that, and I would say that's probably number one. Hmm. Uh, besides the Utah game, it seems like you guys have turned the season around. You went two and ten. We're playing top twenty-five competition. Yeah. Uh, but then you've gone nine and three the last twelve. What changed? You know, I think even even though we were two and ten, I kept saying we're playing well. Uh, we lost out of those first twelve games. Uh, the ten losses, we lost four by one run, two by two runs. Took Nebraska oh. to to eleven innings and lost. Uh, so and we had our opportunities and we really felt like we were playing well. Uh, you don't ever want to be two and ten, but uh, again, when we scheduled these teams when we first got here three years ago, uh, who knew they were all going to be top twenty-five teams? You just That's we just ran gamble. into bus. Like yeah, okay. You know, it honestly felt like we were out in the middle of the ocean, like just treading water, and we just couldn't get our head above water um, in in those twelve games. But it really it kind of tested our metal and got us ready for what we've seen the last uh, 11 games where, where we're playing very, very well, except for last night uh, in two innings. You've so. won both series in WCC play this year. You take two of three against the good Pepperdine team, yeah. and you take two of three on the road against Gonzaga. Probably should have won all three of those. But yeah. you're four and two in conference play approaching San Diego. How do you feel about how things have gone in the West Coast Conference thus far? Oh, great. Uh, you look at our first five weeks in the West Coast Conference, and we're playing – four of the top rated teams in those first five weeks. We play Portland next week, who's rated a little bit lower, but then we go to Loyola Marymount, and we're playing three of those top four teams on the road. Oof. So it's And this year we play nine series, and we have five on the road, four at home. So, you know, the schedule doesn't favor us, but going up to Gonzaga and getting that series win was huge and, and obviously beating Pepperdine. We, we played tremendous, uh, all except really two innings in the first six games. We played great except for two innings. Uh, and... And really, those two innings uh, cost, us, cost us games. Have you figured out uh, how to generate a little more offense from the beginning of the season? Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. We thought going into the season, our pitching staff was going to be our strength. Uh, the back end of our bullpen was going to be our strength. We had a couple injuries. Hayden Rogers went out with a labrum issue. And Austin Kamel, another left-hander, went out with, an, with a labrum issue, which kind of moved Brandon Kinser into a starting role, took him out of the back part of the pen. Uh, some guys still trying to feel their way in the back part of the pen, and we're having, you know, we're we're putting up runs now. So it's like you never know going into a season. I mean, the best laid plans, right? It's like um, it's kind of taking a, a role reversal. We're putting up runs, um, but we're we're having trouble in certain innings getting outs and throwing strikes. And so we'll work through those things. When you look at Brandon Kinzer as the guy that had to go from your main reliever into a starting role, and uh, he's he's done a really nice job making that yeah. transition. He's just such a competitor, and um, you know we're actually going to make it a little bit of a change. Instead of him f being our for sure st starter on Saturday, we're going to save him, you know, maybe Thursday, Friday, to use in the back part of the pen, and we're going to take the philosophy that let's try to win the game that we're playing right now and not look towards uh, Saturday because we are just a little bit short. I like our pen. Keaton Senatiempo has done a great job for us in uh, middle to late relief. Mike Rucker's done an incredible job for us. Um, you know, as a, as our closer. I mean, he was. You were doing the game, Spencer, when he came out. It was like 95, 96, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you know, Woo! it was it was pretty pretty special. And I looked up in the stands with my fingers crossed, going, "Please, no professional scouts be here." <laughs> you know? I mean, we we wanted to move on to pro ball, but man, we sure like Mike to be here next year too. And that that brings me to this question, which is, uh, the casual observer of collegiate baseball probably is unaware of how different the draft rules and and that are and yeah. being 21 and how yeah missions favor in that can you explain that a little bit yeah well you can be if you sign with a four-year school you're draft eligible at 21 or when you're a junior and so, so you have to play two full years yeah yeah you well you have to play three full years three that's uh, right. yeah three full years and um which it impacts us a little bit uniquely because like tanner chauncey he didn't play here three years, but after his mission, he was 21 and uh, was drafted while he was on his mission. So he had a choice to make, come back here or, or sign. 
And so you can have one and done guys at BYU where really you're not going to have that anywhere else because they have to stay there for three years. So it, it, it mixes up the camaraderie just a little bit. And you look at our two and 10 start, and that's a little bit to do with it until we kind of figure out you can't simulate playing Oklahoma in the fall. You have to go play Oklahoma and Santa Barbara on the road and kind of figure out that team chemistry and camaraderie. And I think we've, we've done that. This team is pretty special that way. As you approach San Diego, they are in first place of the West Coast Conference. Uh, what do you tell your guys, knowing that you have to go on the road uh, and play three games against the team that looks like they're in position to win the WCC? Yeah, San Diego is always good. Um, they just there's so many players. It's like UCLA or Pepperdine or Irvine. There's so many players in Southern California. They can recruit 10 minutes away from their house and get get a have a choice of 100 prospects. So they should be good, and they are, and they're confident, and they're playing well right now. We went in there a couple years ago um, when they kind of boat raced BYU, like they scored 20 runs a game. And, and we went in there and had two, two leads in the ninth inning. And Chris Bryant, who's got nine home runs in spring, big league spring oh, training yeah. right Unbelievable. now. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. He, he beat us twice on game winning home runs oh. uh, back there. And, and we were in situations where we had to pitch to him. And, you know, I, nowadays I'd walk in with bases loaded uh, if I, <laughs> if I kind of knew. And Chris played with my son Marcus a, a lot through. Uh, so I knew him, but, man, he improved so much. But you just have to go compete. Uh, we, we'll pretty much have to put together a perfect game. Guys coming out of the pen are going to have to do a really good job uh, because they're not going to let you breathe a whole lot. They're a little bit different team. They, they don't have as much power this year. But they'll bunt. They'll execute. Those guys know how to play baseball. And, and uh, it's going to be a good challenge for us, but we're ready for it. A couple games were on TV uh, last week. Uh, are you camera aware during the game? No. No? I'm not. And it, You're like, I better not pick my nose, well, know, stuff like that. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because I give it one of these on one of the interviews, uh, the, the dugout interview, and then, uh, you know, I'm spitting all the time. It's amazing. I'll, I'll never spit in my life, just in normal life, but I get my uniform on, get on, get on the grass, and I can't. It's just like, you've got to spit. You're in character? So, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, when you see me spit, I'm like, uh, clearly not camera aware. <laughs> so That's awesome. Mike Littlewood with us on BYU Sports Nation, the head baseball coach. You brought up Marcus Littlewood, your son, uh, playing with Chris through different levels of baseball. He's now uh, with the Seattle Mariners organization and has had some time with Go the M. big team yeah. at spring training. Yeah. What's that like as a father to watch your son play at that level? Oh, man, it's unbelievable. Um, it's just obviously a, a lot of pride. And But you look at the hard work he's put in, and, and um, the one thing he said is by being up there, he was there just a little bit last year, but he, he was uh, – wasn't invited he was just kind of there's invited where you actually get big league meal money which is about 95 bucks a day or you go back to minor league camp and you get like 20 something a day <laughs> so that's kind of what they look at but you know he said just being there makes you realize that it's attainable um they're not superstars they're just they they go out and they do it every single day and that's the thing that the consistency so it's it's within his grasp and if he's as long as he's enjoying it um you know and and having a good time and and wanting to work hard at it uh, while he's while he's going to school as well. I mean, that's that's all you can really ask that they're happy and doing what they want. Whether it's baseball or my other kids work in different industries, and I'm happy for those guys too if, if they're if they're happy. I noticed there's several uh, former Cougars in the minors or in spring training right now. Can we go through some of those guys? Yeah, and absolutely. At? So Adam Law with the Dodgers. Yeah, saw he got in the game the other day. He did went one for two yeah. with the Dodgers, and uh, um, somebody took a screenshot of it and, and sent it. So we kind of tweeted that out and got it going. But yeah, really proud of him. I don't think Jacob Brugman's been in any big league games yet, but um, shoot, Bruggy went up to Stockton in, in high A last year, and in about, I think, two months he had like 13 home runs. He, he there was just a, there was tore it up. There was a there where he had yeah. a homer in nine of ten Yeah, games he absolutely league. tore it up in, in Stockton. And so, you know, I'm hoping that he starts in double A. With the A's. We'll see. Yeah, with the A's. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacob Hanneman's got a few big league at-bats. Um, I know they really like him. He's super athletic, and, and the Cubs are full of, of young prospects. But both, Jake, both those guys, by the way, I noticed number 22 in the top 30 prospects in the oh, organization. Oh, good. Yeah, good. well, that's good. Well, and you look at Marcus's number on his back. It's number 81. I'm like, hey, there's only 17 numbers that could be. <laughs> so at least he's not 99. 81. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! And, and Adam Miller. Um, you know, I, I just I saw something where he hit 100 on the gun uh, a couple weeks ago. And so wow. I talked to him last. For us, he was always like 93, 95. But. They love him. They're going to try to fast track him. Just talking to some scouts uh, to the big leagues if he if he can just keep that up and and uh, barring injury. But man, ninety he's he's pitching at ninety eight, ninety nine right now. Pretty pretty special. Diamondbacks. Yeah, okay. Diamondbacks. Uh huh. You obviously want to win as many games as possible and get this BYU program to the next level. But as Jeremy was saying, like there are multiple levels to being a collegiate baseball coach. 
your guys, a lot of them want to go play in the bigs yeah. somewhere. So what, where is your priority list in terms of like winning games and helping guys get to the next level? How do you juggle all of that? Yeah, winning games is number one um, because that's that's what I'm paid to do. Um, and but there is there's so much. That's such a small part of. Uh, I love getting on the field every day for those two and a half, three, three and a half hours of practice because that's when nobody can bother you. You just you're you're kind of like focused up on your team and your guys. But the other 23 or 22, 21 hours of the day are are filled with that kind of stuff. Winning's number one, clearly. You want your guys to move on, but but uh, you know, like we looked at maybe Colt Mahoney's a good example last year. He, I thought he was undervalued a little bit by the by the scout and, the, and the, that scouting industry. And our our advice to him was put value on yourself and make sure that you're getting the value out of whoever drafts you. They're paying you a little bit of money to go because they pretty much own you after that. And so don't settle. Put some value on yourself and and uh, your talent and your ability. And and if if they get that, if they get that whatever number they're looking for that's fair to them and they feel good about it, we want them to go and move on because that's ultimately going to help your program. You can get out on the field, practice, spit at your leisure, do whatever <laughs> you need to do, and just be the coach. Exactly. Just be the coach. No cameras. Hey, Coach, <laughs> uh, we, we thank you for the time. And as much as we wish you could officiate college basketball games featuring BYU, we're glad to have you as the BYU baseball coach. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me on Wednesdays. Appreciate yeah, it. Enjoy San Diego as well. We will, yeah. As if that's hard to do. <laughs> if we win, we'll enjoy it. That's the only <laughs> there way. There you go. Yeah. There you go.